So imagine if you could take a scene like this and populate all the interiors in a matter of minutes inside SketchUp. Yeah, it's possible. Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at Roombox for SketchUp, which is a brand new extension from Lindell, who also brought you Scatter, Transmuter, and 3D Bazaar. So this is going to be a review video, and hopefully by the end you'll have another useful extension in your arsenal. Now before we continue, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. This will help you to not miss any of our new videos, and it is the best way to support the growth of the channel. So what exactly is Roombox and what does it do? Well simply put, this is an extension that makes it easy for you to populate your models with render ready interiors in a matter of minutes inside SketchUp. And obviously we've seen this feature on other 3D platforms, but I'm glad that we got something specifically for SketchUp that will work well with most of the render engines. This is also a very easy to use extension. It uses simple SketchUp geometries which are linked to high resolution maps when you hit the render button. So even if you have hundreds of rooms in your scene, you'll still end up with a light and manageable model. So first thing is first, let's download and install the extension. You want to head over to the Lindell website, there'll be a link in the description. You want to click on Roombox and download the installer anywhere on your computer. And once you're inside SketchUp, open the extension manager and install the extension like you would any other. Now once that is done, you will get three icons that are very straightforward. One, you will get the library, here you get to browse and shop for rooms, as well as add them into your scene. Number two, you will get the room editor, you will use this to update the attributes of the rooms in your scene, such as dimensions and resolutions. And last, you will get a nice selection tool which you can use to select the rooms in your model. So this is my demo scene for this tutorial. I think this building is fitting to test an extension such as this one. And it will really give us a great sense of time of how long it can take to populate a model like this. So here we are inside the library. I am logged into my Lindell account. So you can see all the rooms that I have available. And if this is your first time, you should have a starter pack available for you to give it a try. Now here you have access to hundreds of rooms from some of the best in the game, like Evermotion, Shadowbox, W Parallax, and Lindell. And if you have the pro version, you can import your own maps in EXR format for more creative control. So here you can filter between the different categories like residential, office, and commercial, as well, you can filter by size, and if you're looking for something specific, you can use the search box to find what you need. You also notice that some of these rooms are part of a pack that you can purchase. Here you can see all of the different packs that they have available. For example, there's a pack of 20 offices by Shaderbox, and there's also a residential bundle, which include kitchens, living room, and bedrooms. So let's add a room into our scene. I'm going to filter to my residential collection. And I'm going to add this living room by Shadowbox. I'm going to click to create new. And this is going to load the room into my scene. You also get this nice little demo animation of the next step. And once the room is loaded, you will see this purple box around your cursor. So make sure the room is well placed and click to add it to your scene. As you can see, this is a lightweight geometry and a low resolution version of the room but enough for us to tell some of the details on the inside if you zoom in close enough. And once we have a room in our scene, it also opens the room editor so we can make some more updates to the room. Notice how you can't select the room with the normal SketchUp selection tool. And when I click, I select the building instead. 
but if you use the room box selection tool, you should be able to select any of these rooms through the walls pretty easy. Now before I touch any of the settings, let's adjust the room so it fits well in the context of the space. And if you look closely, the ceiling is not even visible in this scenario. Now you can do this in two ways. You can use the dimension settings in the room editor. But if you use the SketchUp scale command, you should be able to adjust this room pretty fast and easy. Now that's looking pretty good, so let's take a look at some of these settings. Now for lighting, this lets you switch between different light modes. Right now we're looking at nighttime. As you can see, the scene is fit for a nice scenario with all the interior lights turned on. And if you switch today, you will download a daytime version of this same room. As for the resolution, you can change the resolution of the room in the SketchUp viewport as well as an Enscape. So changing this to a high resolution will improve the quality of the room that you see. And this is also the same case with V-Ray and Theia Render. As for the dimension, every room comes with its own set of dimensions depending on its size, but you are free to change them to whatever you want as long as you respect the scale and proportion in relation to your scene. So here we can adjust the width, the height, and the depth. As for the window offset, this offsets the entire room from the front surface. Right now we have a default of 5 inches. But as I adjust, you can see the entire room shift away from the front surface. Now every room comes with its own set of unique sprites. And in this case, we can turn off and adjust the distance of the furnitures as well as the curtains. And with other rooms, you may see other assets such as lighting, plants, and tables. So these are all going to differ based on the room. So you can turn the furnitures off, as well as adjust the distance of where you want them placed. And as you can see, I can adjust the curtains so they can be a little further back from the windows. As for the walls, this lets you switch off the walls of the room. And this is useful when you have rooms that are in the corner of the building, so be great for a scenario like here. If you take a closer look, I can turn off the right wall, the back, the ceiling, as well as the floor. So let's take a quick look on how you can create room assets for Roombox. Now the simplest way to go about this is to follow an example of one you've already downloaded. So this is my download location and I'm going to import one of these into Photoshop. So looking at the composition, we can start to understand a few things. First, we notice that this is a perfect square one-to-one -one aspect ratio with a 3 by 3 grid. The corners are used for the sprites, so these are the elements inside the rooms, such as your furniture and lighting. Keep in mind that the backgrounds for the sprites need to be transparent so they can act as PNGs. The middle row is used for the walls, so this is where you're going to have your left wall, the back wall, and the right wall. And for the remaining two, the top is going to be used for the ceiling and the bottom for the floor. So now that we understand this, I can start to compose the room. And this is mostly a 2D approach, so I use tons of PNG images, so the credit goes out to the owners and artists. But you can also do this pretty easy using a render engine. So you would render each of the walls and the separate elements so that they fit this composition. So this is my example, nothing special and very simple. So let's save this to open EXR format. Import into Roombox and add it to our scene. And there you have it. This is the room I just created. Not looking too bad. The rooms are meant to be fake interiors to add context to your scene. So they're meant to be seen from far rather than up close. This extension is extremely useful 
and it's one of those extensions that just make rendering easy. Here you have something that will speed up your workflow and add high quality details to your render. Now it's fair to assume that adding a single room shouldn't take more than one and a half to two minutes and to populate a building of this size shouldn't take more than 25 minutes. And overall, it reduces the task of populating your model to a fraction of the time than if you were to model each of these rooms individually. So what do you think of Roombox? Be sure to comment down below and let me know. And if you want more tutorials, I will also link the official Lindell YouTube on the descriptions so you can check some of their videos. Now before we end the video, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, and hit that super thanks if you want to support the channel. As always, I'll see you guys next time.